What's up, everybody? This is George C.O.C. Samuels, and you are tuning into Bitcoin Will Come, which is a segment of the It Will Come show. And in today's episode, we're going to be talking about the theory of Bitcoin and also patent wars. So let's dive straight in, shall we? Okay, so uh, today we're going to be talking about the theory of Bitcoin and patent wars. And starting off, in terms of, I guess, what inspired today's episode was I was actually looking at patents in general um, due to some conversations that were being had in the Bitcoin SV space around certain businesses actually now starting to get into or involved with the, uh, the patent race. Okay, so as I was digging in uh, to, to patents in general, I came across some really interesting books actually. Uh, the one on the left you can see here, uh, this is one by David uh, Kopsel, and this one takes a look at sort of like the history of patents in general. So when it comes to science, innovation, and then gene patenting. Uh, I remember also there, were, there was a period, right, where people were actually talking about Monsanto um, and the, the sort of the patents that they were securing when it comes to uh, genes around seeds and food, right? So it's a, it's a very interesting space and one that I think people should be more aware of when it comes to business and what happens behind the scenes. Because I think if you do not um, understand what's, what's happening, it, it, it might be to your, your own detriment. So let me actually just try and adjust this. Oh, it's okay, we're gonna be switching over to some articles anyway. So what I'll be covering today is the theory of Bitcoin, what are patent wars, famous patent wars, blockchain patent wars, and then why patent wars uh, will continue, uh, in my opinion. So let's dive in. So first up, we have the theory of Bitcoin itself. So Ryan X. Charles, who is the founder of Money Button, so if you go to moneybutton.com, uh, this channel, I believe, is dedicated to Ryan X. Charles interviewing Dr. Craig S. Wright. Now, if you're not familiar who, with who Craig Wright is, uh, he's uh, definitely just Google his name. He's probably one of the most uh, controversial figures in the space. However, if you can get past a lot of the controversy and listen to his content, he actually brings a lot of really deep insights into the history of Bitcoin, what Bitcoin is truly capable of, and what you might know as Bitcoin, which is BTC, uh, essentially not living up to its full potential. And so uh, the first episode uh, was released a day ago, and uh, I highly recommend it because it really goes deep into uh, understanding Bitcoin more than what you're probably absorbing from mainstream media or popular sources. So this is one of the things uh, that I go on about a lot, is that uh, what's popular isn't always what's true. And it's important that in your own education that uh, you have a healthy dose of skepticism um, and th that's not to say that you don't trust everything you know trust but verify i think there is sort of a uh, um, a mantra at the moment in the cryptocurrency spaces around don't trust verify it's very subtle in languaging but it's a very important distinguish uh, a way to distinguish um, between the two right it's, it's very very subtle but very important so if you haven't had a chance, I would highly recommend you go check out this. And then let's go into what is a patent, right? So a patent protects the lifeblood of tech companies, the technology that powers their products. Large tech companies with complex products need many patents in order to protect their technology. But huge patent accumulation for defensive purposes leads to a nasty impasse where even if there were legitimate infringement, it would be irrational to sue because it is just too difficult and dangerous. Large companies can use patents as weapons to attack their competitors. And when these comp those, comp those companies own a massive stockpile of patents that cover critical technology and consumer products, a patent fight can become a knockdown, drag out fight where the winner takes home all the marbles. In some respects, a large patent stockpile resembles a nuclear weapons stockpile. Now, you might be listening to this and being like, why would you call it a patent um, war or a patent arms race? Well, this is because even though a lot of these companies may not be doing a lot of physical fighting, they fight in it in other ways, 
Um, and in the science and innovation sector, this is a reality, but it's not often talked about a lot. So a sufficiently large patent stockpile potentially enables a company to sue almost any of its competitors anytime. So this is where uh, the terms patent troll come in because with patent trolling, um, essentially what <clears throat> patents can do is it, it can stifle innovation, right? Um, so instead of allowing people to be able to create, you end up having to worry about, you know, am I infringing on somebody else's patent? So a patent infringement lawsuit is a high stakes battle with unpredictable results. Yes, it is. So the primary purpose, though, of these companies' expansive patent stockpile seems to be a, to deter other companies from suing them, not to sue to make money. So this is an important distinguishment uh, to make because, oops, let's go back. All right. So essentially, what you're seeing is because the reality is that when you get into these larger enterprise battlefields, the reality is that there are a lot of patents that are in existence, um, that a lot of suing does take place. Um, a lot of companies end up securing patents earlier on so that they don't have to worry about um, things in the future, right? It's a defensive move. However, um, companies, for whatever reason, they can seek to enact it if they want to. That's their choice. So it's one of those things where instead of crying about it, uh, it's more of a accept the reality and learn some self-defense, right? This is essentially the self-defense part of the, black, the, the, the patent space. All right, so I won't go into the, the rest of that article, but that hopefully should give you an idea of just patents in general and what the reality is for a lot of big business. Okay, now let's take a look at sort of some famous patent wars. Um, so this is looking at the 1900s to the 1950s. So one of them was the radio, the other was the automobile, and then the third was the airplane. I believe there was also one for uh, the, called the currency wars, which was actually to do with AC-DC electricity. So there's a movie called of the same name called Currency Wars that I highly recommend you check out because it looks at sort of the uh, the way that patents can sour relationships as well. So the automobile patent war, 1895 to 1911. All right, so this was with Henry Ford fighting off the Association of Licensed Automobile Manufacturers in court uh, because he was responsible for building uh, the famous Model T. All right. So that was one. The next is the airplane patent war, which was between 1906 to 1917. Uh, really fascinating because you know about the Wright brothers, uh, but you might not know about the patent wars that took place uh, in this space. So from telephone to powered flight. Okay. And so, yeah, there were a lot of copycats. Um, and I believe the Wright brothers also uh, spent a lot of time uh, fighting off patents or enacting them in order to get uh, get through that very messy period. Uh, the next was the radio patent war, which was uh, 1903 to 1943. So again, you know, I'm showing you these examples so that you're aware of the fact that these things do take place. You just don't hear about it a lot. Okay, so it's, a, it's sort of an accepted reality when it comes to technology. And every time there's a new technology, the ones with enough foresight will actually look to um, patent their, their findings before others. So it, they call it a patent arms race because it is like a race to see who will get in first. So next up, we'll look at you know why patent wars will continue, right? So this is a more recent article. Um, this was April 18th, 2019. So when I say recent, at least within the last decade. So patent and royalties cases can be hideously complex, hard for a jury to understand and therefore unpredictable in their outcomes. So it's easy to see why Apple and Qual Qualcomm, Qualcomm? <laughs> Someone correct me if uh, I'm saying that wrong. Uh, settled out of court. Both are technology manufacturers. 5G was another more pressing reason for Apple to come to a worldwide resolution of its disputes with Qualcomm. And so if you actually look at the sort of shares, um, Qualcomm is actually doing, again, uh, making some huge strides in the 5G area. So if you are an investor or if you're looking to get involved in sort of the next sort of 5G potential patent race, then um, definitely have a look at what these guys are doing. So Apple lost, um, unfortunately, in, a, in, a, in one of the, the sort of 
patent law cases. But not only has Qualcomm received a huge revenue and share boost, it has also been relieved of a considerable legal burden. And yet it still faces more such challenges with antitrust investigations by the Federal Trade Commission, European Union, and Korea, as well as a big class action lawsuit in the US. So this is the thing, right? Uh, with this sort of litigious um, environment, because everybody is looking to secure patents, you end up having a lot of people waste time and money, well, in my opinion, um, suing one another. And I think that's the issue that people have uh, with patents. Unfortunately, again, it's a reality. So, you know, you can seek to maybe change the whole game, but it's not going to stop people from pursuing uh, these sort of paths. So the tech takeaway, with each advance in smartphones, we get fresh patent and licensing challenges as companies seek to protect their leads and competitors balk at what they have to pay to access the best technology. Nokia took on Google and Android players earlier this decade before Apple accused Samsung of copying the iPhone. The patent wars are far from over, just cycling through to a new telecoms generation. So this is sort of a precursor to the blockchain side. Here's just a, a quick diagram, right, of sort of the intricacies of this patent war environment, right? So you can see here, um, you've got the US, um, you've got the EU, you've got Korea, Taiwan, all coming after Qualcomm because it seems like they have patented a lot of technologies. Um, Intel uh, competition, patent litigation, Intel and Apple, antitrust and contract litigation, right? So obviously these guys are pretty annoyed with Qualcomm. Um, Huawei, Samsung, um, Foxconn, Compa, all right? So the solid red is dispute conflict, uh, settled dropped, and then the green is contract alliance. So you can see here, Samsung uh, and Apple ended up uh, coming into a sort of, some sort of agreement. Um, but yeah, you would imagine just how much money actually gets uh, wasted in the background with a, a lot of this. Next up, okay, now on the blockchain side, um, if you took out N-Chain holdings, generally what you would see in most publications in the mainstream are your, your general uh, corporations that you've heard of, right? So MasterCard, IBM, Accenture, Walmart, Alibaba, uh, so on and so forth. But the reason why I brought this up is because N-Chain is usually taken out of uh, the picture because they aren't a very well-known uh, big corporation yet they have the most number of filed patent applications and then those granted, right? And so I, I, I don't know if this is the most uh, recent updated uh, patent chart, but Enchain I know uh, does have definitely the most significant number of patents uh, filings. And so what that means, right, Enchain is led by uh, Craig Wright, or he is a chief scientist for Craig Wright, so which I showed here, Craig S. Wright. And um, it, this is what I look at, right? Now you don't see any of the other companies across many other blockchain or cryptocurrency uh, companies doing this or even looking here. And I believe this is because they don't understand big business and they don't understand what is truly at stake in the future. And so Enchain does, and they've done this as a defensive move so that they don't have the issue of what took place originally with Bitcoin, which was, which kind of resulted in, in the splits, right? So you went from BTC, which is what everybody knows is Bitcoin right now, to BCH, Bitcoin Cash, and then BSV, Bitcoin SV. Um, there's still sort of a, um, a war going on in the background in terms of who, who does own uh, the name Bitcoin, right? Uh, across BTC, BCH, or BSV. And I believe the N-Chain guys, or Craig Wright, has probably the strongest argument uh, for why BTC is not actually Bitcoin. Um, and this goes back to sort of this fight between, you know, the, the popular and the true and what's true. Um, and so there's been a lot invested in Bitcoin. And then, and of course, there's a lot to lose for people who have invested in BTC um, if uh, these patents start to take hold. But if history is anything to, uh, to, to learn from is that these patent wars um, those who win end up do sort of taking over the, the mind space for the masses in the long run. So, right, from the sort of history that I showed you guys, right, with the famous patent uh, wars, right, over here, you wouldn't have known much about them if I hadn't shared with you uh, today, unless, of course, you're a geek like myself and had been looking into this. Um, because it's just not something that the average consumer worries about. But it is a reality that takes place in the background. Now, as a result of all of these guys competing, though, 
it does produce sort of the best results for consumers. So that's why most consumers don't even need to worry about it uh, half the time. But to be informed, it, it can be useful. Now here is just a, a, another message in regards to the initial message that I saw, right? Um, in with uh, BSVers uh, starting to get involved in the patent uh, arms race, if you want to call that. So one user said, it would appear the primary argument put forth by self-proclaimed capitalists in favor of patents is everyone else is doing it. I'd be stupid not to take advantage of it. I sure hope they don't universalize those ethics when it comes to slavery. So well, slavery, of course, being a, a very uh, relevant topic uh, with uh, what's happening in the world right now. And so, yeah, I'm not going to go through all of the comments here, but essentially, right, this is just what's happening in the background. Um, you're going to see probably people be really upset with sort of the move into the patents area. But it might be a case of, well, if you don't do it, you might be left in the dust. And uh, it's, I know it might stifle innovation, but it's a reality nonetheless. And I, I personally think that it's important for people to be aware of this game. And unfortunately, it is a game. So with that, uh, why blockchain patents are inevitable? So why they'll be inevitable for the blockchain space is mostly because historically when it comes to science, tech, or innovation, um, the patent game is inevitable, right? And if you don't understand it, learn it so that you know how to play it as well, all right? Um, you may have to make your own alliances if you're a company or a startup uh, getting into the space uh, so that you can access you know, these patents uh, without having to worry about being sued or um, litigious behavior. And that's just the reality of it, right? So again, instead of crying about it, um, crying is probably a harsh word, but instead of um, saying that it's bad, try to understand it, all right? And with that, would love to hear your thoughts on patents in general, right? Do you think it's good? Do you think it's bad? Do you think it's against anti? It's anti-capitalist? Um, comment below, uh, and remember to like and subscribe. This is going through our Bitcoin Will Come YouTube channel, which is separate from the It Will Come channel. But uh, yeah, you can you can find us by just looking up uh, Bitcoin Will Come. All right. And with that, as always, I'll see you on the flip side.